to listen to my friends, Mr. Comer, Mr. Heiss, you would think that the republic is about to come to an end if we pass D.C. statehood. And the narrative they have chosen, which I'm sure would be popular in Fox News, is that somehow this is a plot, a conspiracy, to re-engineer America and a narrow partisan gain as a little extra. In the history of the United States, we have added states and statehood status as an act of Congress. Congress has broad latitude in the Constitution to take action on this question. But I, I guess I want to suggest a counter-narrative that my Republican friends don't want you to really focus on. And that is that they have a predilection all too often when they come to power in disenfranchising voters of color. There are over 300 pieces of legislation as we speak introduced by Republican legislators in 43 different states to roll back the ability of voters to vote, to register to vote, to vote early. And it took a particularly pernicious turn in Georgia after we actually saw what happened when people could vote. That's what they're afraid of. It is better to disenfranchise and deny than to compete for those votes. If my friends were sincere about their constitutional qualms, surely over the years, however, they've done everything in their power to try to make sure D.C. had a representation in the Congress. On the wall is my predecessor, Tom Davis. He was chairman of this committee, a Republican. He came up with a deal. How about we add a seat for Utah and we, at the same time, give voting representation to the representative from D.C. How was that idea quashed by Republicans? Not on your life. Every time Republicans get control of Congress, this body, what do they do? They deny the D.C. delegate the ability to participate and vote when we're in the Committee of the Whole. So the crocodile tears about constitutional doubts, that's our only concern. Upon examination, don't hold up. In fact, it's a subterfuge for a powerful dynamic, sadly, tragically, at work in the other party to make it harder for people of color to vote in this great democracy because they're afraid they lose elections when that happens. Well, they're wrong. This is not part of some big conspiracy to re-engineer America. This is 200 years late, but better late than never to try to right a wrong. To try to enfranchise 700,000 plus fellow Americans who shed their blood in our battles and wars, who pay more than their fair share of taxes, who live here and are Americans, but they are denied repre voting representation in the Congress. And that's what this bill is about today, righting a wrong. It's as simple as the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. They, the 700,000 plus residents of the District of Columbia, are entitled to the same rights we have across the river in Northern Virginia. The right to choose a voting representative to the House of Representatives and two voting representatives to the United States Senate. That's what America is all about, and that's what America, I believe, must insist upon. Thank you, I yield back.